Hi, welcome to class. We're the only two right now, but the other ones will show up eventually, right? Hmm. I hate my life. I hate my life. Hey, Professor Sunrise Productions! Hello class, Professor Sunrise here. In today's class, I will first of all apologize for not uploading in a while. Um, there were a few things here and there which were stopping me from uploading, but the most important aspect we will be going over in this video, and that is the fact that I was just very unhappy with Dragon's Bistro Control or Dragon Link in the last few weeks. I was streaming a lot, uh, and if you want to catch me streaming, definitely check out the link in the description below. I try to stream more and more regularly now and then, but let's get back to the topic. I was just very unhappy with Dragon Bistro Control or Dragon Link in the current format. I was just not really finding a list. Everything I had had some problems. So let's just take a look at all the lists I had in mind in the last few weeks. Take a look at them and what made me finally stop them. And then finally take a look at the Dragon deck profile I'm currently running. And I'm quite happy with at least uh, for the foreseeable future. But with YCS London and Los Angeles, Las Vegas uh, being over. And having my taking a look at the staples I have and taking a look at the decks which topped and were in high um, representation, I feel very confident with the current iteration of Dragon Spider, Dragon Link I have uh, for the upcoming format. So, without further ado, don't forget to like and subscribe, leave some feedback down below, and let's get right into the video. So, the very first list I want to go over with you is the good old Bistio Control. You all love it, you all see it. I think there were a few interactions with it on live on stream as well, at least in YCS London. I really couldn't catch all of it. I was just watching day day two because I had like a, a nice evening uh, on day one and a whole day I, I was just busy so I couldn't really watch it. So I was not too sure but a few of my friends told me there were some uh, interactions and name calling of this deck. Um, of course you all know it, you all love it. Um, what were the problems with the list? Um, well, first of all there were the ever-present consistency issues the deck had. Um, well, you do have a good amount of one card starters and save root, and you have black metal, so you have five really good normal summons with chaos space. You have eight starters, and then you could actually call uh, say that Lebellion is kind of like a starter in a sense, or just a very, 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 very good extender. So you have like eight starters, and if you are very gracious, you have 11 starters, and that's just not really that good. Um, ideally, you would like to have 12 to 14 starters, so this is the first problem the deck had. It was always working in the past because you do play a lot of good non-engine and seal pass is definitely doable and together with like any of the normal summons um, you do get into place at least somewhat consistency but the um, consistency issues are definitely present. You do have two Albion so you're actually playing a 38 card deck so you can definitely make it work but this is definitely the biggest problem. The second problem I had with the deck is just the um, not the bad Kashtira matchup, but just the low amount of gas you have um, when it comes to using good going second cards right now. So cards like Book of Eclipse, uh, cards like Dark Ruler No More are not really that usable by the deck, but they're very good against Kashtira or Sprite in general, at least for Dark Ruler against Sprite and Book of Eclipse against um, Kashtira. But you couldn't really use these cards very effectively just because you were lacking the gas uh, going second. A lot of the time what you did, you would be just trying to equalize the board with hand traps before and then just maybe get rid of one or two cards with battle, thanks to like the big bestials or like a Druze Worm, and then make a seal and pass. And this game plan, while it does work against Kashira, it's not really the cleanest play. And then lastly, add to that the problem that Runic is everywhere. Um, at least I thought so. It's not actually that present, but definitely Runic is taking um, like a nice step up in the representation. And Runic just shits on this deck. Runic tip, Runic destruction are just auto wins against this deck because we actually don't really have any sort of meaningful disruption against them unless it's Runic Sprite uh, because we only really deal in like board removal and Runic Naturia doesn't really care about that. And the board removal we have that they would care about being Branded Beast on Runic Fountain, you will never resolve because they just need any Runic card in their hand to basically negate it or like make it fizzle, however you want to call it. Um, so Runic being in the front run, some consistency issues, and then the low amount of gas just made it kind of unhappy for me with Bestial Control. And the start of the format was way better, with way more branded around. Uh, you could definitely make it work with um, just Sprite being there, branded, and Kashtira. You could make it work. You had two good matchups, one bad matchup, but now with Runic being more and more popular, Mathmac being there, which is like, you, I guess you have an arguable match, a uh, favorable matchup, but like... Sometimes you just don't draw a Bistial and then you just get shit on because the hand traps don't really do anything and Kashira being a bad matchup. It just didn't really feel that good. So I tried to fix that issue with uh, someone on stream telling me that Small World could be a very good addition to the deck. So I tested it a lot and I was very unhappy with it at first because the Small World Witches are not, just not there in this deck because you have a lot of um, Dark Dragons with the same stats. 
uh, and same level, so you can't really bridge with that. Then the light dragon, the one light dragon you have has also 2.5k attack, so you cannot bridge it with any of the one offs. Um, then the, the other light dragon you have, which could do make a lot of bridges, is really not that good with all of the non engine you have, but I somewhat made it done. Uh, adding the Noctu Vision made it so that you could go from a Veiler or an Ash Blossom into some engine, so that felt very good. The Nibiru was very good because you could go into Black Metal with it. Um, and overall, you just had to make a few switches here and there. You had to cut black metal to one because you would search that off small world a lot of times because you had dark dragon, you would go into light dragon, back into a dark dragon a lot of times. Um, so black metal would be the go-to search target. And I thought small world would be <clears throat> the, the perfect card for it. Then I tested it more and more. I got happy with it because of the uh, good additions and small world bridges that I had. And then the problem started to come. Going second, I sided it out a lot of times. It was only really good going second with exactly with exactly Gamma against Kashira. Very good interaction, by the way. So you activate Small World, you search a Gamma, they, they are forced to activate the um, Arise Heart, and then you just chain Gamma. Then I noticed, hmm, a lot of times I can't actually get into a Gamma. So the Small World bridges became more and more weird. And then at the fact that while it is, in theory, additional consistency, all one card starters are not nearly as strong as the Circular. So going minus one to get to them doesn't really feel worth it. And going minus one to search an Ash in the, uh, like, in that's the last action in turn, while it's not bad, it's definitely not worthy to play a bad card like that. So overall, I was just very unhappy with that list, and it just didn't really feel clean and small world. Sometimes I just had small world and I just couldn't do anything with it. Um, so overall, I just discarded this list after like two to three days. Then I had something very interesting, which I'm really like to showcase to you guys, and that is Dragon's Dogmatica. And by the way, ignore, always ignore the side deck and this stuff because it doesn't really matter here. So I had this very interesting list in mind and just take a look at it. So we had, the, of course, the Chaos package for the normal summons, pretty standard. Uh, I do still play the Chaos Emperor just because it is an insane grind tool, especially with the smaller Bastille engine, but we'll get to that. Then I had the Dogmatica package. I was um, always thinking about playing more or playing less, but in the end, I decided to play the complete Dogmatica package just because you want to get into them. Um, and then play, of course, the Maximus, which is the, the best card in the deck, but also the reason I won't be playing it, but we'll more on that later. And then the Fur and even the Punishment, because I figured if I play the big package, I might as well go all the way in. And then for the Bist deals, I only have three Lubellion, two Magna, one Baldrake, and then a Regan and a Branded Beast. This might seem um, too few, but actually it all makes sense. And then you have the ability to play a shit ton of non engine still, so with three, six, and nine. 11, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and even 14 slots if you count the driver. So you could, in theory, play 14 non-engine slots with this. So what made this deck so insane? Uh, first of all, you do have um, six starters and normal summons in these. Um, or not, more or less normal summons, but you have six ways to get uh, into a link monster into the graveyard, which is very important. Similar to Alistair, all of these dragon starters would get you a, dra uh, a link monster into the graveyard. So all of these dogmatic cards then become just broken extenders. And the way this worked was... You would get into your normal seal play, and then you could use your rebellion to get into a regain. Very importantly, you can actually activate regain in this car in this deck first, so you can actually make use of it in your own turn, which is very broken in my opinion. And if you have the Dogmatica engine, then you could get into Maximus. Maximus banish one out of the graveyard, trigger the branded regain to actually get a draw one, and then Maximus could be sending exactly Albion and Titanic Lad. And with that, you have the ability to an end phase search a Fleur de Lee. And then also an end phase set branded beast. So you actually got into the basic seal plus branded beast board, but you also had branded regain even more regularly than you had in standard bestial control. Add to that that you had the fleur de lis, and sometimes you even had the dogmatica punishment. And you don't really need the extra deck in this deck, uh, even post one. You can just summon a shit ton of bestials and go for game. The chaos emperor did became a little worse with that, but you could honestly just search it and then just still summon it on the board for 3k, have a bestial in hand anyways, and just kill anyways. Uh, especially with the Dogmaticas, they also put a lot of pressure on board, so I figured the punishment would be decent. What is the reason why I didn't go for this deck ultimately is the fact that Maximus is just not a very good card right now. Uh, with Ashtira playing Garura and sometimes even still Anthes, you are just automatically going to lose. With Labyrinth being around in the meta and them playing Anthes, you cannot really ever resolve a Maximus against them. Against Branded, you can resolve a Maximus just because I was also playing the Omega. So against Branded, I could be sending Omega plus Albion or Titanic Light, whatever, what I would be needing. And then I can use a Bistial on the next thing they send and re recycle one of them with Omega. So against Branded, it was fine. But overall, against the most represented deck in the format, as you can see in YCS London and YCS Las Vegas, there's like almost 50% Kashira, at least in top card. Um, 
So you cannot really resolve Maximus against those decks just because you will be giving them a free draw and they could also be playing Antis completely validating your whole setup turn. So while this deck, it feels in theory in like in a vacuum, it feels like the strongest of the decks also plays the most starters or the, the the strongest starters and cards which do something on their own. Like Ecclesia is kind of like Lebellion, it gets, at least it gets you into something and with a shit ton of uh, hand traps it can get you there. The Deer Servant is broken. Searching you Ecclesia, which gets you into Maximus, and also getting you a draw one with a Garura, which is also a dark, so you can get that uh, regain setup going very nicely. It just feels insane. And sometimes in the end phase, you win plus three, and overall in your turn, I think I went plus seven or one plus six in the standard combo. Uh, I will showcase you guys the combo, by the way. Um, it just overall feels very, very good. Uh, but then you have the problem of the Kashira uh, and the Labyrinth and the Branded players having very good extra deck cards which are able to be sent by Maximus. So overall, I just don't think it's the current meta for that. But it, maybe if the meta changes and not a lot of people are on any extra deck sent, uh, like any cards in the extra deck which like to be sent to the graveyard, you can play Maximus again. But I think if the meta comes to that, a Dogmatica will become... Uh, relevant by itself again in any sort of form it's a very strong engine if you uh, are allowed to resolve maximus so maybe even if the meta comes to that we will be punished by the dogmaticas just being too good to be unchecked in a meta like that but who will know so i will quickly showcase you guys the combo of the deck so this is the combo while it does is a three card combo um you have to keep in mind that a lot of these cards just do something by their own and get you some uh, advantage by their own so it's of all it's not of course it's not a combo deck well just the the, the best case scenario you can have with this deck if you have like everything which is insane so you start off with Seyford or whatever you feel like depending on if Droll is uh, popular of course you get into a Cool Observant, Blee Blah Bloop, you do the standard plays um, going into a Seal just quickly um, do this you go into Pisty, um, summon that, trigger that, summon Wyvern Burster, uh, get that into the graveyard blah 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 so we get into a one card Seal that's standard then we go for a Lubellion we uh, search a Magnemid, uh, summon off the Magnemid, banishing. Um, in this case, we will be banishing the Wyvern Burster because we always want to have something in the extra deck, uh, something from the extra deck. So we go for a Lubellion. We have Magnemid on field triggered, of course. Uh, we get into a regain, very important. And then here we lock ourselves from the extra deck by going into an Idea Servant, sending a Garura, and searching an Ecclesia. Um, search Ecclesia, effect Garura, we draw one. Then we go for our Ecclesia summon, uh, effect Ecclesia, searching Maximus. Effect Maximus. Banish one. Uh, is it effect? Yeah, it's an effect. Uh, banish um, the Garura. Then we trigger regain, put Garura back into the extra deck, which is very nice. Draw one. Um, then we declare Maximus, sending the Albion and the Titanic Lad. Um, then we, honestly, we can just pass the turn at this point. Um, we just go into the end phase, and in end phase, Titanic Lad triggers. Searching ourselves if Dunimuk wasn't lagging. Um, Flutterly. I'll be on triggers, setting ourselves this. Magnemut resolves, and we will be searching ourselves a ball drake. And by the way, you saw that I was only playing two Magnemut just because you had to uh, cut it down, and this is uh, something which I was testing in Dragon Link as well, but we'll more on that later. Um, so this is the, the whole setup you do, and as you can see, we start with five cards in hand, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So honestly, we went plus seven. Well, this is, of course, the most optimal thing, and you won't always have that. This is just the ceiling of the deck had all of the sudden, which was and felt insane. But like I said, Dogmatica Maximus is too strong for its own good, and a lot of times it won't be playable in the meta. But that is something I had in, with the deck. And if Dogmatica Maximus becomes a good card and becomes usable, I will definitely be testing this deck a lot more. So let's take a look at some Dragon Links. Uh, list I had in mind. If you've seen the, I think it was UK Opens or something like that, you've probably seen the Gabriel Nets list and I was testing a lot of with that and I will definitely be a, a doing a video on that um, as well, but I honestly don't think the Kashira engine is really that good of a starter engine for Dragon Link just because it doesn't really play good with any of the other Dragon extenders you have. So if you get disrupted on it, it just is very bad and hard to recover from that. But I was testing a 60 card Dragon Link pile with the Dragoonity package as well. And overall, while it does have its quirks and benefits, it just didn't really feel all too compelling because while you play 60 cards, it just becomes harder and harder to see the most powerful cards in your deck, being the Chaos Base, being the Lubellion, being the Seyfried. You just don't draw into these cards anymore. And while the Dragoonity engine has a very nice theory, 
by turboing into Gaydurk and resolving ravines uh, up to three times in a turn, you do give yourself the ability to send a lot of the cards you have, a lot of the dragons you want in graveyard to the uh, in deck to the graveyard. So you can send a safer, you can send a Lubellion, and make basically make it so that you're forced you're forcing yourself to get into these cards. The problem you have with that is that Ravine always goes minus one because you always have to use a discard. So in the end, while you do get to everything you want to do with dragons, um, the dragon end part is actually not that strong. Like going for Seal, Savage, and Branded Beast uh, with a Lubellion in hand, or uh, like a Lubellion on field and a Druze Worm in hand, while it does seem very strong, it's actually not, it, it's definitely not an auto win, and it's definitely not worth it to use your whole hand for that play exactly. So overall, anything like crazy like this just didn't really feel good at all. And just going minus 100 to resolve your basic dragon combo of Seal plus Savage and Branded Beast just didn't really feel right to me. So, with all of these very unhappy lists, what is my actually go-to list right now? So let's check that out. Before we go into the card by card, let's quickly talk about the theory I had with the deck. So as you can saw, as you saw already earlier in the video, I had a problem with Bistage Control Consistency. It had two little starters. And I had a problem with Dragon Link's consistency because it had too many bricks in a 40 card deck. So what I tried to accomplish is increase the amount of cards I play in my Dragon Link deck while also not increasing the amount of bricks I played. So only thing I added really were very good Dragon cards which play already well with the deck and how it wants to play. And my gameplay heavily focuses around still being Bistio Control. So you could call this Bistio Control with, um, with a Rocket Engine. If you want to, I will probably do something similar like that just because this deck basically plays like Bistio Control. It just adds a Savage onto the board and commits like one more card into the end board. But it has all the benefits of a Dragon Link deck, so it can do some really nice pushes into Borderland, which of course is a very good card right now against Kishtira, for example. So this is the Theory Man the deck. We try to get as consistent as possible with Dragon Link while still being able to go for the basic Bistio Control uh, board and going in theory for the ultimate Dragon deck. So. Let's get into the card by card. We have 50 cards in the main deck, by the way. Um, so for the Bistio package, we have three. Let's put this away here. This is annoying. We have three Lubellion, three Magma. Pretty standard, though. I did test the 40 card dra uh, Bistio Dragon Link, whatever, with only two Magnum. It was fine in 40, uh, but in 50, you definitely want a three. Uh, one Serenia, one Druze Worm. No more um, Ball Drag. If you're not playing Bistio Control, you definitely won't be needing the extra Bistio. And this is all you really need. Uh, the ball deck is in the side deck though, spoiler alert. And then I play one branded beast and one branded regained. Um, reason why I still play the branded regained, even though it's definitely not necessary in this version, is because it gives the deck a, such a big boost in terms of ceiling, while only adding like an upstart uh, into the head into the deck. So I really feel like it is a worth investment of um, ceiling, just because this card is insane. It lets you go for ball and lines even going first. If you're playing against Kashira, for example. I just really like how this card uh, just gives the deck infinite value, basically. So I'm a huge fan of that, and I would definitely still be playing it, even though we are not ending on it nearly as often as Bistio Control does, probably. Uh, for the Chaos Package, still these are the best cards in the deck. Um, it is sad that you don't get to see these as nearly as often in the 50-card uh, variant than compared to in the 40-card variant, but I think I did add a good amount of cards which um, make this problem not to be as big of a problem. Um, for the rest of the Chaos Package, of course, we have the small Chaos Dragons and the one Leviania. Um, I'm sad to not be playing Chaos Emperor. I thought about signing it, but I don't think it's worth it for the side deck. And Leviania is just arguably better in Dragon Link because you can actually get it alive going first. If you have everything, you can even hand loop together with Seal, Savage, Branded Beast. Um, overall, this just feels very good going second. This is insane against the Labyrinth. This is insane. This is actually, uh, if we are in a grind game against Kashira and we get to resolve Magnum and we have a Graveyard setup, this is an Arise Art out. So that's always huge to have in the deck, um, especially against Kashira. Um, so yeah, really, I'm a huge fan of the Levine. I do miss the Chaos Emperor, but because we are not trying to go for like an infinite grind game, we can actually kill the opponent quite fast and effectively. I don't think it's needed to be... Uh, it's not needed to have a Chaos Emperor. For the Rocket stuff, I play three Quick Launch, two Tracer, uh, and one Recharger, together with an Abs, and the Field Spells, I guess. You can also count them towards that engine. Um, only thing important here is probably if you play a second Tracer, if you play like a second target for the Tracer, if you play a Rocket Synchrone, um, and ultimately I decided that I wanted to have as little bad cards as possible, and Tracer is probably the best one to draw out of all of the Rockets. 
You could argue Rocket String Con could be better, but I don't think you need it. While it's a very good search target for follow-up, I just rather have a second tracer that way that I can go into Barone's a little more consistency and have better two-card combo with uh, with um what's it called, safer, and have the ability if I hard draw any of these that I can make a, um, a savage under, um, what's it called, droll even. So I felt that this was a very decent pick um, for this, the third rocket target. Um, and I would, would do it still the same. And this is, of course, all standard. You don't need more than that. I'm not a huge fan of playing like an extra target for Tracer in case you draw because it's just an additional brick and we don't want to be adding those. Now for the generic dragon stuff, and the way I felt like it felt so good to get up to 50 is three black metal dragon and the one red ass darkness metal dragon. Just having an additional normal summon, which actually plays so good under Droll because you get to both at this and at the boot sector launch if you um, get Drolled afterwards. Um, it's super fun because you have boot sector and you have red ass darkness metal dragon, so you can go into seal quite easily. And then if you have hard drawn rocket engine, you can just uh, make a savage underneath. So that's really good and why I wanted to play two tracers. And this card just feels overall really good. And just going from 40, adding three extra normal summons, the deck does have a lot in the safe route and the rockets, but you don't have to normal summon the rockets. If you have another normal summon, you can just go for that. And it only really is bad going second to have these. So I really like um, the addition of the black metal. It helps insanely well with consistency. And then I have two Noctovision lastly for the Drangs. Um, I did that because I did want to have more non-engine. I was thinking of playing this at three and I was testing with it and it's definitely fine and you could definitely do that. Uh, but this is a card that can break. And if I didn't need as much non-engine because of Kashira, I would definitely play this at three and play a little bit of more non-engine. Um, but right now I think non-engine is very important in Dragon Link or in any, in any deck basically. And I wanted to have at least a somewhat healthy amount in this 50 card pile, which I still don't think I have um, because for non-engine, we have 15 slots, I believe, and 3 Gamma with the Driver, of course, and 3 Talents. Uh, we want to be able to counter opponent Droll. Droll is everywhere right now and can definitely hurt the deck, but the way we build it, uh, the way Black Metal plays under it, the way you approach your combos, if you have 6 counters with it, uh, you are super fine if you get Droll most of the time and can counter with uh, stuff you own. And then I play out for a Rise Heart and 3 Droll, uh, three Dark Ruler and 3 Imper. Uh, these cards are really good, especially with Sprite becoming more and more popular. Dark Ruler is insane. Because the way our deck now plays with Borrowland being um, basically our go-to summon going second, um, Dark Root is a really good card and we can just, even with an Imperm on a Rise Heart, we can easily play because we have such a, so much easier time outing it than the Bastille Control variant has. So I'm really a huge fan of these. And lastly, I played 3 Droll. I tested with it. I was playing Book of Eclipse over it. But <clears throat> because Book of Eclipse is very bad against anything which is not Cash Tira, um, I really wanted to cut it, especially because of Math Mag. Uh, we have Dark Ruler and Eclipse, and we have six stat cards against arguably the third or six, uh, third, the second or third most represented deck. Um, I wanted to have something else, and Droll is just really solid against basically everything right now, up to an auto win or like a turn skip against so much. Um, it's really good against Cash Tira as well, and I just wanted to have it, especially because if we get Drolled, I can at least counter with my own Droll. We have to be careful and we have to play accordingly with Magnumut so that we have something in Graveyard, which is of value to add back for follow-up. Um, so you have to play with your uh, pet banishers around and stuff like that. But overall, I'm a huge fan of how we play with the defensive slots here. We have 15 cards in 50, which is fine, um, which is also why we have to stick with high-impact stuff because we basically will only be drawing one, uh, maybe two in, like in theory and in, in, in math. I guess uh, so we have to have high impactful stuff uh, in the side uh, in the uh, defensive card slot so that we get the most value out of them so no ash in the main deck because of that for uh the extra deck i play one striker dragon one romulus pre six uh wrangling stuff two seal or bestial control with rocket engine <laughs> uh, two seal is mandatory in my opinion because um, because we are playing steel control still um we definitely have times where we just end on this and still need a second one if like we get rolled for example and we don't have that much gas or if we are pushing into a board and we have branded beasts available we can make a seal effect branded beast pop that get into the, our black metal and continue popping off stuff like that so i'm a huge fan of this two seals i play one mascarena because if we get nipped um we cannot make a second seal so we have to make a mascarena to still at least get some sort of disruption i play the pisty line into barrel end I play the dark line into Unicorn Access Code, all pretty standard so that we can use our 
shit ton of bodies we have into something meaningful. Cross to Encrow Savage. Starlight, you make this very little, though I am on DB and so I don't have time. Um, but you can make this going second against um, any sort of board to push out, uh, like to break the board or stuff like that. If you cannot go into a borrow land, that definitely comes up. And it's a time win condition. Um, one Barone, this is usually what you go in second, so you usually don't go for Savage if you have Rocket Engine, but you go for Barone, just because it's better. Uh, you can sometimes enter this going first as well, so this is a huge pickup for the deck when it comes to utility, power, everything, basically. And then finally, one or two. Because I side a lot of um, Bestials, because I need all of my stuff to be high impact, and Bestials in certain matchups are just high impact enough, you make this post side a lot of times, especially going second, so I want to have access to it. Um... For the side deck, um, like I said, we have three Ash. These are generically very good against Branded and Labyrinth. Um, so it felt like a very nice uh, spot in the side deck because these are just high impact card against those decks. Uh, so it felt very good for that. Three um, Bistials, really good against Math Mac, Branded, random ass decks for the Mirror, for example. Um, so I really just wanted them for the ratio. Of course, we want a Beldrake because we don't even have that name in the main deck. And then I play one Druze, one one Serenir because I don't want to brick on multiples. Serenir being a discard is really good, but going second Druze form is probably better. So I felt like just playing in all of them as a one-off. So I minimize my chances of seeing multiples is fine. I have two Kaijus to have additional outs against a Rise Heart post side. This is also good against random decks like Runic Plunder. Um, three Cosmic, my go-to board, uh, not board breaker, but a back row tool. I'm thinking about playing Evenly or a Lightning Storm over them depending on how prop, uh, popular lands they are. So after I've taken a look at the side decks um, of like YCS London, if they're all out, you can see, or if Akuna Madara, shout out to you, um, does the side deck staple video on that. And you can see how many people are playing lands here. You could play Evenly's over those just because Evenly is way better against Sprite, for example. Um, and, and I really would like to have more slots against Sprite, but my main deck is already built to beat Sprite quite effectively. So I didn't really bother all too much with that. And then for lastly, for going first, I have three anti spell, one called by. Hand trips being everywhere, called by is really good against that, but also against Math Mag, uh, Runic, Naturia. Um, branded, this card is just really good overall in the main deck, and I really like it. And three anti spell is king in this deck. Uh, we do have a slow, lower chance of seeing it because we're playing 50, of course, but if we see it and we have a Savage established, we have an auto win against so much which is such a huge perk uh, that branded uh, Bestial Control alone without the Rocket Engine didn't have. Just having the access into an Omni Negate just makes cards like Anti-Spell so much better uh, because in Bestial Control, I just play Judgment over uh, Anti-Spell because I couldn't protect it. But if you have the ability to protect the Floodgate like that and the Floodgate hits a majority of the meta effective, it's an auto-win for so many uh, games if you just have that combination. So I really like that about this deck as well. So uh, that's it basically for the profile. Like I said, um, I'm still testing with the deck a little bit, and I hope you guys can uh, join me testing with it on the stream. Like I said, the link is down in the description below, but I'm a huge fan of it. Definitely still need to get into some of the combos, but basically we're still playing Bustier Control, so we're still a Bustier Control channel for now, even though we are playing a Rocket Engine to get into um, the Savage, of course. But without further ado, class is dismissed. You guys are free to leave. Professor Sunrise out. P -p -p Peace.